Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm really excited about my guest today. Today I am interviewing Gina Bianchini. Uh, Gina is a legend in Silicon Valley. If there is a list of female founders, she is always on it. She is the CEO of Mighty Networks. Many of you have probably heard of Mighty Networks or are using Mighty Networks. It's a place where you can build your own community. So without further ado, I bring you Gina Bianchini. Gina, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I was thinking about it, and I think we met about five years ago. So we both went to the Stanford Business School at different times, and there was a conference. Do you remember this? An entrepreneurship conference, and you were leading a session on product market fit. Yes. And I reached out to you afterwards and said, hey, we should get together. And then we met in your offices in downtown Palo Alto. Yes. And we sat down and we were talking about our business models and things like that. And you were so kind. I remember you being like, I totally get what you're doing in any way I can help. I'm in. And so then recently, somebody I was talking to mentioned Mighty Networks. At the time, it was called Mighty Bell, right? Yes. And I was thinking about you and I thought, oh my God, I wanted to reach out to you, have you as a guest on the podcast. And what my audience probably doesn't know is that I think of you as one of the original girl boss founders in Silicon Valley. (laughs) Which makes me feel so old. I don't mean it to make you feel old. Okay. I'm going to like embrace it. Embrace it because you like you have seen a lot and you have built businesses. Yes. And so any so let's start um so can you share then your story and how you became an entrepreneur, how you founded businesses and where you are today with Mighty Networks? Sure. Um and and I almost want to start with where I'm at today because I always think that that's sort of the the more fun, you know, spot to to begin with. So Mighty Networks is a, is a software platform. We sell it as a service. So, you know, people pay us money, although we do have a free version, yep. um, to build brands and businesses that bring people together. So our passion is how do we enable and unlock for, we think about it as niche entrepreneurs, but it can be anybody from a small business owner to a creator to a you know lifestyle influencer to actually big brands use us as well. And the really the special secret sauce of a mighty network is that because you have in one place your um, what you're probably using today as a as a group on a you know big blue platform uh, on, <laughs> that shall remain nameless. Right, uh, an online course on a platform like Teachable or Kanjabi, a you know email list over here, a website over there. You know all of the time you're spending in social media. You know it, we actually let you bring those things together, and when you bring those things together, something magical happens. Namely, the thing we learn about at Stanford Business School, which is called a network effect, meaning you can create a brand or business that brings people together such that it gets more valuable to everyone with every new member who joins. That is the reason Facebook is as powerful as it is today. That's the reason you know we're using Skype right now for this podcast. And it's the reason that each and every one of us has the power and potential to take a small business and make it a lot bigger. Because if we bring people together in one place such that your courses and your groups and your website and your content and your events and your messaging are all in one place under your brand, you are able to create something that gets more valuable with every new member who joins. So I I share that as kind of the, the opening because everything in my life and career has brought me to this moment and this place where I am absolutely obsessed with the notion of how to enable niche entrepreneurs to 
bring people together and create something much more valuable as a result. Oops. So I, I grew up in Cupertino. Uh-huh. Down, which, down uh, street. Yep. Yeah. So it's, you know, where Apple was, you know, is, was founded and, and is headquartered today. I grew up, you know, amongst orchards. My grandparents owned a nursery. Wow. Um, wow. And I watched how the orchards got, you know, taken over with, you know, with office buildings. But what I learned, which was just sort of a, a, a function of where I was, you know, my dad was a history teacher. Um, my family was obsessed with thinking about, you know, how does social change happen? And how does, you know, how have cultures changed? And I was always really fascinated by people systems and how, you know, we've gone from one culture to another culture. Um, and then, you know, being in the heart of Silicon Valley, you know, looking at technology through the impact it has on culture, I feel like everything in my life led me to the moment that social, you know, at the time it was called Web 2.0, you mm-hmm. know, in the early in the early aughts. Um, but fundamentally, it was about oh, I get this. I you know have been surrounded by technology. I worked in the Goldman Sachs High Technology Group. I understand technology. I understand engineering. But my passion just happened to be. How do you bring people together, not as robots, but as human beings? And I remember the first time we talked and we sat down and you said that to me. So your (laughs) message is incredibly consistent. Like this is what gets you going. You know, it's not the things, you know, it's funny because this is stereotypical, uh, but there is some truth here, which is women like people, men like things. And so you found a way to use technology for people. You know, certainly I, I hope so. Um, it, it is, you know, there's certainly moments, um, when I feel like, oh my gosh, am I doing, you know, am I working on the right stuff? Am I, you know, am I, is this going to, is this going to be successful? You know, we all have those moments of, you know, fear, vulnerability, but what I know to be true is whenever I have followed my own curiosity and, hit the send button on something that scared me just a little bit. Yes. Yes. The the results have been profound. Um and that's, you know, at times that's kind of all we've got in terms of what, you know, what drives us and and what motivates us. So, you know, I feel very fortunate that I was born in the right place at the right time to be able to do, you know, what what I really believe in, which is how do we how do we push out to the edges of the network in in a really dorky technical way of saying it? Um, and what it really means is how do we push out to beautiful individuals with the the ability and curiosity and passion to bring people together and allow them to create network effects? Um, you know, again, create a brand that brings people together, you know, without needing to be an engineer or, you know, commute from Palo Alto to San Francisco or whatever, you know, whatever it is, you can be anywhere in the world. And as long as you have a passion, a, a, a niche that you want to bring together, that the tools and technology exist for you to be able to do that and create something that gets more valuable with every new person that you bring into that tribe, you bring into that, into that niche. Okay. So let's, let's like break it down. My audience is somebody who might be listening to this probably started as let's say a food blogger Mm -hmm. and they loved food. So they started putting their recipes out there and then they started getting uh, visitors and then they started growing social media networks, you know, social media accounts, and then they started to monetize. And this is this is very true, which is, I think that a lot of online entrepreneurs, especially female entrepreneurs, kind of start with their passion. And then they figure out over time, okay, how do I monetize this? So usually first you put up some ads and then you say, oh, I can work with brands. And then you say, I want to create my own products and I want to grow my social media accounts. And they start building that way. So could you talk about 
how you think about that and yeah. how like so what happens I absolutely is love this question oh wait wait but i just want to say because what happens is people the people who you start to piece together these stacks of technology oh i need to make a course i go over here oh i need a, a pinterest scheduler i go over here oh i whatever it is and so we end up with all of these different things that all you hope kind of talk to each other yep so so talk about then the organic yeah. growth of somebody's business and yeah. how you could help them yeah and, and you forgot the podcast oh and the podcast yeah, you, yes. you forgot the podcast you forgot like hey wait a second you know should i be doing a youtube channel for yes, this? yes um, yes um yes. oh gosh you know there there are no more ads so now i should you know should i launch a patreon subscription yes yes, yes um yes. so, so this, <laughs> I, I love this question so much because it's our world. Oh, wait, and one last thing, which sure. is my audience typically is not super technical. They are <laughs> much more creative. So as yeah. I think I told you, we created a little, like a SaaS business called Milo Tree. And our intention, our users are bloggers and people like that with not a lot, don't care about the technology. So we took on the technology because my husband's my partner, he's a technologist, I am not, but we made it really smart and really easy to use because we said, uh-uh, we're not going to give you a lot of options. If there's a good option, we're going to make it take it, we're going to make this choice for you, so all you have to do is just install it and it works. Yep. And I feel like philosophically, you are we are speaking the same language. Yes. Okay, so go go for it. Okay. So the first thing is, let's just celebrate for a second that wherever you start following your your passion is awesome. Like it just is, you know? So so the, 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 the hardest step is, is, and I sort of think about it as the courage to focus. Um, the hardest step is, is the first one, which is, you know, launching that first blog or launching that podcast or launching, you know, whatever it is, the first thing that you decide to do that expresses your passion in a way that can bring people together. So yay, like this is awesome. <laughs> um, the, the, the interesting thing and, and the part for us that we passionately believe is that it's actually great for all of these different platforms and terrible for the entrepreneur, the, the business owner, the food blogger in this example, um, to be trying to use all of these different services at one time. Yes. And, you know, there's the obvious reason, which is it's a heck of a lot of work you're also paying SaaS fees for each and every one of these services. Yes. Or you're, or you're you know, giving, you know, cuts of, of things, a cut over here, a cut over here, a cut over here, a cut over here. But the big problem with having, you know, 10 different services, you know, because we haven't even talked about, like, what if you want your people to, you know, start meeting up or you're going to go on a live event podcast tour. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I wrote a cook, you know, you wrote a cookbook and now you're going to go around and talk about it. So the problem, and this is something that, that again, I, 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 I think it's a really, you know, uh, positive thing in, in terms of the opportunity for my networks, but it makes me mad as a, as a technologist and as a Silicon Valley person, which is, it's absolutely a missed opportunity for every entrepreneur, every food blogger who is not first and foremost thinking about how am I bringing my people together in one place so that when I want to launch events, it's one click to turn it on. Right. Or when I'm when I'm ready to launch my course, I don't have to go use a new service. It's right there. It's already in my mighty network in this case. Again, you know, I'm biased, but <laughs> the reason why, you know, we've invested millions of dollars in building out this type of functionality is because when you bring together the option of turning on groups, for example, or the option of launching a course or deciding, you know, hey, I launched a course and instead of, you know, it's, it didn't work as well as I wanted it to, I just turn it off. 
but I don't have to move my people anywhere. I don't have to, you know, rebuild in each and every one of these different places. And the most important thing, so that, so that's, you know, we, we talk about Mighty Networks as like the simplest way to build a business online today because your subscriptions are in one place. So you don't have to go use Patreon separately. Um, Will you just explain what Patreon is? Because I'm not sure my audience oh, knows. Yeah. Sure. Patreon is a service that is actually really, really good. It, it started because YouTube channels, um, the sponsorship money for YouTube channels kind of went away. So people who had a large following on YouTube would go to patrons, patrons on Patreon who they would essentially ask almost like a Kickstarter where it was like, you know, $5 to join my exclusive Facebook group, $10 to get exclusive access to this kind of content first. If I have a, you know, a new, you know, new post coming out, for example, or, you know, you get to hear my podcast before, you know, other people hear it, um, in a week. Right. So it essentially shifted the business model for YouTube creators from sponsorship to subscriptions. Right, right. And in fact, there are certain podcasts that I, I, I give money to on Patreon because I love the content and they've decided not to do ads. So right. I'm willing to pay five bucks a month to exactly. get access. So yes. Exactly. So we built that into a mighty network alongside with online courses or groups or events or questions and polls or, you know, so, so the idea is you don't have to go to four more different services over time as you want to add various things to your business. It's all an on off switch directly in your mighty network. So at whatever point you decide to use a mighty network, you might just use it, you know, up front to replace your website or instead of a Facebook group. But what's awesome is that you never have to go somewhere else when you're ready to grow your business in a, in a, in another way. Okay. So is it, does it have, is it like an email service provider? Um, that is the only thing we don't do, but we have notifications built in. Okay. So if you want to create, for example, um, a, an article and let everybody know that the article is up, that's all built in. Um, if you want to run a separate weekly newsletter, that's something you go to MailChimp. Got but it. here's the awesome thing. We actually, different from every other service out there, we give you access to all of your data. What does that mean? Meaning that when you create a group on Facebook or even, you know, even on Slack, you don't actually get anybody's email address, location, the topics they're following, anybody that they've referred into, you know, that group. We give you all of that information, plus a bunch of analytics that make it so you actually know what people are doing with your content or conversations or, you know, we, we think about it as engagement plans. So what that means in practice is that, one, you're not beholden to a mighty network. You can you take can your, leave it. Yep, yep, uh, yep. Um, you know, we want to lock you in because it's awesome, yep, not because yep. you, you know, have no alternative to leave. Um, but more importantly, again, when everything's in one place and you can turn on different features um, when you're ready to expand, um, it means your people can actually meet each other. Mm. Okay. okay. And if your people are actually meeting each other, your followers, your fans, your subscribers, when they're meeting each other, it means that you actually are going to do less work. What do you mean because by that? they don't have, they're not relying on you exclusively for all the posts. They're not relying on you to build all the content. They're not relying on you for any reason that they would pay attention to you or come back. So there's a woman, uh, I'll, I'll give you a very specific example. Great. There, there is a woman named Tara McMullen. Okay. Formerly Tara Gentile. Tara has been a long time a uh, creative live uh, small business guru. Um, she has, like I learn from her every day. Um, and she woke up one day and was like, I am exhausted. <laughs> I don't want to actually be the person who is front and center and have it be all on my shoulders. 
um, which is the reality of life for whether it's, you know, us as bloggers or, I mean, I feel that like, you know, when, when, when I've run a blog or when I have, you know, been the face of a company or whatever. So she launched a mighty network called co-commercial and co-commercial she describes as a virtual co-working space for online small business owners. And she charges a subscription fee for an, basically it's a one-time annual price of $1.99 to be a member of co-commercial. And she's posting in co-commercial. It doesn't mean that she hasn't, you know, in any way, shape or form stopped posting on social media. But what it has meant is that she not only has another revenue stream, subscriptions, um, but she's freed up her time so that when you know people are sending her emails, um, and this happens a lot, especially to podcasters, she's got a great podcast as well, where it's like, oh my God, I don't have time to answer all of these fantastic emails coming in from my followers or my subscribers. I wish they could talk to each other. Mm. So Tara has a thriving mighty network in co-commercial. And even the name is not about her. It's about what people are doing together. They are, they are co-creating their businesses together in the context of this network. So they can like ask advice, that kind of thing, help each other kind of raise each other up. Exactly. And, you know, as we all know, like anybody who's listening to this podcast is listening to this podcast in part because you know, all of us have tough days. This is a tough path that we have chosen. And there are moments of absolute and utter delight when we have that sense of accomplishment of having posted something or, or, or added that video or made that recipe. And it's awesome. And then there's the next day where you're like, oh my God, I have to do this all over again today. And then I have to do it all over again tomorrow. Yes, it is. And a, when you, it's like you're we're Sisyphus pushing the rock yeah. up the hill and then it rolls back down. <laughs> Absolutely. Choose a model where you are building, where you are consciously building a business that brings people together, that goes away. And you become much more closely aligned. You're a host of a party, which is very different. You know, it's like I always think about it as the difference between when you have to give a speech and like, you know, dread it for two weeks and like work really hard on the speech versus like hosting a party is really, you know, yeah, you have to set up the room. But for the most part, people are there to meet each other and you get to like engage as much as you want or as little as you want. And it doesn't change the fact that people are there interacting and engaging with each other and creating something special that you've still brought together these people. Right, right. But you've done it in a way that is not exhausting. Okay, so let's go back to the food blogger who starts with a food blog. And then she says, hmm, I or he, I wanna build this into business, into a business with multiple income streams, right? So they sign up for Mighty Networks, and then would they move their blog, first of all, to Mighty Networks, because you're a blog platform? It it depends, it depends. Okay. So here's the beautiful thing. It's a free country, and you get to do it in whatever way that you want. Um, And the beautiful thing is, you know, we have tens of thousands of active, thriving Mighty Networks, and they're all doing it a little bit differently, but here's what I would recommend. Okay. If you want to move your blog, great, move your blog. What I think is better is to, uh, replace your website. So if you have a website or, you know, something that's static, we have sort of a very simple landing page, um, that you can fully customize. And so the idea is, you know, replace one of the things that you're doing. So bring together your, you know, replace your website. Um, definitely think about migrating a Facebook group, or if you're using a Slack team, um, that's really where where a mighty network shines. Okay. Um, and we have some really specific, you know, um, kind of one, two, threes for how to do it well because we've worked very closely with a number of very large Facebook groups who have moved over to a mighty network. Um, right. Okay. Because a lot of, I would say a lot of my audience either has their own Facebook group or participates yep. in Facebook groups yeah. daily. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, Two years ago, I would say, you know, the, the, the kind of 
overall sentiment was, oh my God, why would I ever leave Facebook? Everything is already on Facebook. I'll miss things. I like, you know, you're basically would tell group admins they were idiots if they were moving. Fast forward to today. <laughs> yes, how things have changed. Yeah, so now actually the crazy thing, and, and I'm still sort of surprised by it, um, is that now I, I actually talked to, I, I talked to a podcaster last week, or two weeks ago now, time is flying, um, two weeks ago who said, um, he, runs a, he runs a retirement podcast, hmm. and he's hmm. like, I was ready to start a Facebook group, and my members, you know, the, my subscribers, I sent a, you know, I sent a survey out of like, what would they want? And they were like, do not do this on a Facebook group. Um, we don't want the distractions. You know, we don't, we want to actually be able to meet people in, in sort of its own space. So instead of feeling like you're in sort of a crowded bar, you know, the idea that you're in sort of a room where people can talk to each other, it's like the back private room. And, um, and then there were other concerns about, you know, about Facebook were that I don't unfortunately think are going away anytime, anytime soon. So, um, the, the, the what, kind wait, of the what do you, what do you mean by that? You mean in terms of I, privacy and I data and stuff like that, privacy, pri you know, and, and just the fact that you really have no predictability around what people are actually going to see. Right. right. The algorithms are so challenging that, you know, where six or seven years ago, you know, people would organically see all of your posts. I know. Yes. Today, one to three percent. Right. Um, so the thing I can promise anyone who, who goes to a mighty network is, you know what? You have a hundred percent guarantee people are going to see your stuff. Right. And that's pretty powerful. So basically we have, we have some, some nice little tools that make the transition from a Facebook group to a mighty network just a little bit easier. And then there are some great best practices, um, that, that are, awesome that have been done over and over and over again. And the, the momentum in terms of the number of people who are moving their Facebook groups um, has really accelerated in the last 90 days. Um, and there, what's exciting from my perspective is that people are actually really excited about moving um, and people love, you know, love a mighty network. So what is happening is we're seeing larger and larger you know, YouTube channels and bloggers. I mean, one of one of our earliest adopters of Mighty Networks actually is a woman named Gretchen Rubin, who I'm sure your your audience knows from the Happiness Project or her latest book called yes. The Four Tendencies. She yes. has a podcast called Happier that's ex extremely popular. Um, and you know, she chose two years ago, almost two and a half years ago now, to move her brand and build a new one on a mighty network called better. And the reason was that she wanted people who followed her, especially around the four tendencies, which is basically a, a way to think about how you react to expectations that are placed upon you. Mm -hmm. She actually launched it a year before she, she released the book and it went to the bestseller list in part because her most passionate fans right. were all in the same place. Right. And when and because they had a deeper connection with the content and obviously with Gretchen, her, but it yep. was really about the content, because of the relationships that they had with each other, mm -hmm. the book went to number one and she just successfully launched her second cohort of the Four Tendencies online course, which has you know basically sold out in a week wow this wow. is all because she brought people together she created a network effect she focused not on oh shoot i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in this sort of fragmented i'm doing all these different things in all these different places but rather she knew that that the that the hub of her activity and her brand needed to be about bringing people together because it's highly scalable, meaning, you know, right. more, when, more and more people can use it yep. without any more work from Gretchen. Yep. Um, everybody gets more value with every new person who joins 
and she has full access to you know the data and the activity so she can see what people are doing and get to know her followers and fans even better so as she's planning out her next course or her next book or you know we're coming up on the on the 10 year anniversary of the happiness project that she can really think about how does she get that to you know what does she do for her you know most passionate fans and followers right. but then how does she harness their energy to right. get it out to more people and what one thing i talk a lot about is that to build a business you don't have to have the scale of Amazon. Remember, like you need a thousand true fans. Yeah, and if you there's can, a great you, piece. Exactly, you, and I, I've, I've, I've you talked about it a lot, which is, you know, those are the people you want to cultivate. You don't want that person who's like, yeah, whatever. You want those people who go, wow, I am all in. That's how yeah. you want build this sense of community and this interaction where, you know, one plus one is five and also where you can then get them on your side and get them to buy from you. Yeah. I, I, I could not agree with you more. The, the other thing is that even Amazon, even Facebook, they started narrowly. Yes. They started with a niche. Yep. And the reality is that while a niche sounds like it's small, it just means that it's narrow. Um, and anyone who's driving in their car, listening to this podcast is capable of building a compelling niche that brings people together by just simply you know, framing these techniques that you know the best and brightest in Silicon Valley, all these moguls who you know, unfortunately, you know, you know, control a lot of our time and 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 inputs, media inputs. Um, but fundamentally, any of us can do it, as long as we're not just you know plugging along, trying to do a little bit over here and a little bit over here and a little bit over here. The reality is that Gretchen Rubin. Tara McMullen, these amazing entrepreneurs and creators know who their customers are. They know who their followers are. And if all you are doing is um, building followings or building groups on other people's platforms, right, right, you will never achieve the level of success that they have because you don't know what your people are doing. It's a little bit like putting a spike in the ground and saying, here's where I live. Yes. And you can find me here and you can find my people here. And this is like, this is the, the hub. Yes, exactly. Versus I'm a little bit over here and a little bit over here and a little bit over here. And you have to reach out, you know, you can reach me, but like personally, I'm not as good at getting back to people who DM me on Instagram. But if you email me, I will definitely get it. But other people right. are like, oh no, I spend all my time DMing on Instagram, for example. So Right. And also for every DM that you have on Instagram, because here's the problem, your fans can't really meet each other that well in the comment section of Instagram. Right. Right. So now imagine instead of you having to answer each and every one of those DMs or emails, that you can jump into a community that people are answering each other's questions. Right. They're DMing with each other and you get to come in, first of all, your brain just has more time to be creative. And then when you jump in, you can do what makes you know the, the conversation just take off and participate in as deep, or as light of a way that you want. That is the magic and also the sustainability of our businesses. Right, right. And and we talk about this all the time. So a lot of us have been in this business for a long time and we have seen algorithm changes and you know, just you are beholden, you are a sharecropper if you're building your business on Facebook or Instagram or wherever. You know, my audience flips out when Pinterest changes stuff because mm -hmm. Pinterest drives lots of traffic and it's kind of the nature of it. And the nature is you have to be flexible. But what I like is you're coming and saying, no, no, no. I mean, you do have to be flexible, but you don't have to be at the whim of all of these services. Make your own, make your own business. Yeah. So, okay. A couple things. One, let's say I want to join one of these communities. 
Mm-hmm. Can I go to Mighty Networks and search for Gretchen Rubin's community? Or how would I, like, is there some sort yes. of directory? Like with Facebook, I can search for groups. Yes. So we we have a find a Mighty Network function. It is not something we invest heavily in at this point. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to be your best source of um of new new traffic but at the same point in time neither is squarespace or shopify right. um, okay so you think of yourselves you, you think of yourself as say a shopify store or a squarespace yeah. meaning people aren't discovering your right. network on mighty networks they are right. learning about it and then using the platform like you might with right. a shopify okay that and makes sense that, yeah and part of that is be, is very consciously because we want you to be able to create the mighty network that you want. Got it. I would argue that that you know when you start to do a lot of discovery um, as a service, that like what you get is some spam and potentially bad actors and or, or other bad things that that can necessarily happen. We'll get there um, as we find ways to do it in, in ways that are positive, optimistic, and awesome. I like that. Uh, Yes. What we are focused on right now is how do we allow a creator, that food blogger in our example, to have everything at their fingertips that they may want to experiment with next. And that on course, that podcast. Sorry. Is the backbone of a mighty network then like a feed? What does it look like? Yeah, so we do have an activity feed that is personalized for every member, meaning that they can opt in or out of topics. If they're using a course, uh, that course update will show up in their feed. Um, People they follow will show up in their feed. But the difference is that the host, as we call the people who are, you know, it's the equivalent of our group admins. Right. Um, a host or a creator at any point in time can make sure that everyone sees something that they have added. So there are some override features uh, and also some just really nice discovery features we've added as well um, that that allow for that feed to be augmented with topics, with groups, with events, with courses and other features. I wanted to take a minute to talk about Milo Tree, which is the company that I have built with my husband, David. Milo Tree is a group of pop-ups that you install on your site and they help grow your social media followers. So you can have an Instagram pop-up that will say, follow me on Instagram or Pinterest pop-up that will say, follow me on Pinterest or Facebook or a YouTube pop-up that says subscribe to my channel, or even an email pop-up that says join my list. You get all of these pop-ups in one MiloTree account. Uh, If you head over to MiloTree.com and sign up right now, you'll get your first 30 days free so you can try it out. And again, it takes your traffic and converts your traffic into followers. And to be honest, what better followers could you get than people who've already been on your site, who've already liked your content, in today's world, you want engaged followers. Milo Tree grows engaged followers. These are people that will interact with your social media channels and will read your email list. Uh, so if you're trying to grow your business, it's worth checking it out. So head on over, I invite you to head over to MiloTree.com and sign up today. Now back to the show. So let's say we have a, lots of people write books. So mm-hmm. I like that example that you used from Gretchen Rubin. Uh, I write a book and, you know, I'm going to maybe self-publish it because it's the internet today and I can do that. But I need to get people to discover my book. So instead of, again, creating a Facebook group and trying to, uh, you know, be active on Instagram or Pinterest or Facebook or whatever, I would go to Mighty Networks and I would start a network. Yes. Right. And then I would be directing people to my network. Yeah. Think about it as a hub. Okay. So you're still going to have the, you know, the, the spokes on Instagram or on an email list or on Facebook or on Twitter or on Pinterest. Um, but you're sending people to one place. 
And that one place allows them to meet each other. Yep. It allows you to launch new things. So, you know, take a book. If you have a book and it's a nonfiction, you know, uh, instructional book. Right. Let's say it's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. That is a perfect online course. Okay. That is a perfect series of events. That is a, you know, a perfect uh, way to do live Zoom or Crowdcast. And so you, the way to think about it is that you can sell more books by having this type of mighty network and you can, you can extend the life of the book in all of these other ways. And Gretchen Rubin, uh, if you go to betterapp.us, Okay. It's a fantastic, it's public. You can, you can see everything kind of in one place. Great. It is a wonderful example for those who have instructional books, um, or a cookbook or a finance book or, or anything in between. And you can find more ways to not just promote your book to your most passionate fans and followers, but also extend the life of it in all of these other ways. Got it. Wow. I, I Again, I feel like as it's funny because you're right. Two years ago, it'd be like, you're crazy not to have a Facebook group. And yep. today it's a little bit like um, yeah, that you want to kind of be able to step away from these large platforms and really build. Some, I think it's like the power of Shopify, for example, which is exactly. you might have started with an Etsy shop. But then but you don't own your Etsy shop where all of a sudden with a Shopify store, I can own my e-commerce site and I can be in, you know, I can do all of this cool stuff, but it's mine. Right. And by the way, we have a great, uh, great way to integrate sh Shopify stuff. So um, I just digress. Uh, no, no, but please, because I want to know all the things that can integrate. So if, in fact, I have multiple uh, cookbooks and I put them in shop in, a, in my Shopify store with all of my cooking tools, I can then integrate that into Mighty Networks. Yes. You you can add a link um, in the in just the upfront navigation. There's a couple of different navigation spots where we let you put custom links. Okay. And then you also have this really cool feature, which is, um, we call it the welcome and featured sections, meaning that you can actually do like a full article promotion and then make sure everybody, you know, and basically put it in a place where everybody sees it like first when they come in and then when they come back. So you, you get to have those spots where you can promote additional products and services. And if I post in my Mighty Network, can I make it so that everybody gets some sort of notification? Uh, yes. So we have something called Notify All that is only available to the hosts or creators of the Mighty Network. Okay. And that then notifies everybody that you just posted something. And it's totally opt in, you, you know, you, it doesn't happen automatically. Um, so it's, but it's a really nice way of um, having a hundred percent confidence that everybody is seeing something that you just posted. And how, what is the, like, is it the groups that are the most active that you think are the most successful? Like what, like how active then, because you're, if you are the host of your own party, right? you know, you do need to be walking around and making sure everybody's happy and making sure everybody has a drink, let's say. Yep. Uh, what are uh, some best practices yeah, for yeah, hosts? Yeah. yeah, so here's the good news. Um, you know, I was thinking about it this morning, actually, because I was, I was writing something up. You know, we, ha we run our own Mighty Networks. So, you know, while, while it may just seem like it's good business to make it really easy to manage, a mighty network and, you know, do quick things that actually pack a punch. Um, we very, we do it for very selfish reasons, namely that we run our own mighty network. So we're sitting there and we're like, uh, like without doing this thing, it's a total pain. So some of the, the ways that we let you automate the drink, uh, making sure everybody has a drink, right? Obviously we have the, you know, the, the, normal ways of moderators and other people that you can deputize to be, you know, making sure everybody's having a good time. We also have things, um, you know, again, another basic thing is scheduled posts or scheduled features. So you can basically line up a bunch of stuff for the week uh, and, and let it go and 
know that it's going to get out and without you having to do anything. But there are some very specific features that we have put in place um, because of our own expertise and experiments that we run that are awesome for getting the conversation started in a very low uh, effort way on the part of hosts. Um, one, we, we have something called an icebreaker question. And an icebreaker question basically drives up the number of people who start contributing in the first, you know, their first session. So they join and they're asked a very simple question that a host can set up. Um, we love the question, you know, what do you want to get from a community of peers? Um, or what do you want to get from people, you know, who love the food blogger? And the answers people will contribute in their first session are so rad. Mm. And so right then and there, you know, more and more of your members are already getting comfortable contributing. Right. And for everybody who contributes, you know, other people see it and can say, hey, welcome. Mm. That leads us to the second feature that we have that makes it really easy to manage um, a, a mighty network, which is uh, we call it welcome all. So we were, we were manually welcoming every single person that was coming into a mighty network that we were running a few years ago. And like at the end of a Saturday where I had probably welcomed like 300 people and I was like, oh my God, there's a thousand people that joined in the last like, you know, 48 hours. We built a little feature that lets that process get automated. Namely, I go in and for all the members who have joined since the last time I clicked this button, they get a welcome email from me, a personalized one from Gina saying, hey, welcome to, you know, welcome to this particular MyD network. And then there's a button that says, you know, say thanks or say hello. And then I can start conversations with people. Um, but everybody gets that warm welcome from me. And it's one click. Mm. Another feature that we that we put in place are polls. Um, polls are one of our favorite features because, you know, a quick hot cold poll or or which is basically a poll that says, you know, are you positive or negative on X, Y, or Z, you know, or for or against X, Y, or Z. Um, we also have a poll that's what we we call percentage poll, meaning what percentage of your time are you spending listening to this podcast, or what percentage of your time um, do you spend cooking each week? And then you can compare your time or resources or whatever to the rest of the membership. Um, so there's just some really fun ways to use polls that. For the host, it takes like five minutes to post the question and it takes, you know, on a life of its own. Got it. So those are just, you know, another another thing that our hosts do, you know, when they're, you know, Tara McMullen again is deep in building a book and, and doing some amazing half marathons and things like that. So what she does is just sets up a weekly live Zoom call uh, or Crowdcast chat. I think she uses Crowdcast. Um, where she can just take questions and people can meet each other and it's once a week and it's live. So it feels like, you know, it's almost like this, um, you know, just this coming together of everybody at the same time. And then it, it reactivates and reengages people in, um, co-commercial her, her mighty network. So what's fun about this is that there's all sorts of different ways to keep it interesting, to keep it fresh. And to really set it up so that it's no more than a few minutes every day or, you know, an hour to set up kind of the week ahead. Right. Um, and, and then when you have online courses, for example, you know, that that's certainly more of an investment that your your listeners are probably already doing or thinking about doing because people will pay for courses today. Right, right, right. Uh, but you set that up and people are meeting each other in the context of a course and you know, you don't have to do a lot. Right. So, you know, we continually find ways to make mighty networks, you know, in, in, in the technical term, self-organizing. But what it really means is that you as a host get to set it up, make it, you know, you can decorate it. Uh, you know, some of the best parties any of us have been to have had, you know, a big bag of Costco chips and some root beer. Yes. Uh, but it's, you know, it's fundamentally about the people that you bring together. And and again, it doesn't mean that you can't decorate your mighty network to the nines um, and really make it your own. But it also means that 
if you bring people together and have some really compelling questions, right? you know, that, that, that can make something wildly successful. It's interesting. I'm just thinking about it for myself, which is I have very, I've talked about this on the podcast. I have very siloed businesses. So for example, when we first met, like we started, my husband and I started a company called Catch My Party. It still exists. It's still growing. Um, and it's completely separate from Milo Tree, which is our SaaS app, software as a service um, app. And then out of that, I grew the Blogger Genius podcast. And I had this SEO expert on and we were talking about this and this has come up a variety of times, which is let's if we take Catch My Party out of the equation, the Blogger Genius and Milo Tree, they're different, but they're kind of related. And I have a very difficult time integrating them in a more cohesive whole. Yeah. And you're getting my, you know, like the wheels are spinning of, and I have a Facebook group uh, called the Milo Tree Mastermind Group. And again, as you and like we, you and I have like real business backgrounds. And my goal with the Blogger Genius is to, to interview people like you, people who have been successful, people who have ideas to share, but also because I want to help and I want to share you know, what I've learned being in the trenches. And I want to share that with my audience. I want to say exactly what you were saying, which is some days it's really hard. <laughs> some days I don't want to get out of bed. And other days I am so excited to get out of bed. And mm. so I, so anyway, so for me in my businesses, I'm thinking, wow, I am all over the place. I am on Facebook and I am on Pinterest and I am on Instagram and it, it makes my brain explode. Yep. So we're going to have to have a conversation after this. <laughs> we love, you know, I, I don't know that it's our tagline at Mighty Networks, but, you know, there's probably something along the lines of Mighty Networks to help you make your brain not explode. Yes. 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 <laughs> I like that. I think you should you should trademark that. Oh, I'm going to get on that. <laughs> well, Gina, I, okay. So if, as a, as a female entrepreneur who has been at this, and again, we have men too, but just, there is something really special. I think about having somebody like you on the show, um, who has, you know, rolled up your sleeves and really just dove, you've dove in there, dived, whatever it is, um, you, you know, really like talk in the talk. Uh, what piece of advice would you have for other entrepreneurs? So it's interesting. I, I really try to stay away from advice because I think it shuts conversations down as opposed to stories and experiences and, and ideas that kind of continue the conversation. But what I, here's what I would say. I would share that no one who it, it looks like they have it all together um, that looks like they're wildly successful, that looks like they, you know, that they're perfect. None of them are. <laughs> and each and every one of us gets up every morning and has a little bit of terror, you know, a little bit of fear of like, you know, what if this doesn't work or what if this goes away or, or what if, you know, what if I'm walking into, you know, a, a, some kind of bad news situation today? And what I've learned is the more that I view what I do as a series of experiments and the opportunity to learn, mm. the happier I am. Mm, I like that. I like that. I really like that. Oh, well, okay, Gina, how can people reach out to you? How can they learn more about Mighty Networks? Yes. So first, my email address is what you would think it would be, just gina at mightynetworks.com. Our website is mightynetworks.com. It is free to create a Mighty Network. Um, we have also, you know, tons of resources, and they're only going to get more and more you know, fun and deep uh, in the new year related to not just how to get the most from a mighty network, but but really like how to grow your brand uh, and how to grow your business as you start to really take, you know, take your niche, take that food blog, take that unique, um, that unique category that you are building 
and expand it into you know, a podcast, into a series of events, into a VIP subscription, into an online course. You don't have to do any of these things all at one time or, um, you know, juggle things that are more than, than what you want to juggle. But there is something really powerful of just experimenting and just trying things. So that would be, you know, I, I, I tend to post on LinkedIn occasionally um, is probably where I do the, the most when I write something. Um, and one of my goals for 2019 is to like get a little bit more comfortable with putting a video on my face and <laughs> talking. About it. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. Like I look at myself and I'm like, Oh, I should really, really start to actually want to wear makeup, which I don't. Um, and never, um, so, so hopefully, you know, I, I will do more of that in, in the new year, but, but for the most part, you know, send me an email, join Mighty Networks, you know, we're friendly. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Gina, thank you so much for being on the show. You have given me so much to think about, especially as I try to wrap my arms around my own business. And I'm sure for all of you, and I like what you said, which is, to experiment. You know, it's funny, we met at that uh, session you led on product market fit. And what I have learned over the years is you will never know if you have product market fit unless you are experimenting like crazy. Yep. That's the and only that, way to find it. And that is something I relearn every few Me weeks. too. <laughs> Me too. You know, and so this notion that anybody knows that you know anybody is doing it really well it's just they're better at at busting through the fear yes i love it i love it well thank you so much for being on the show it's my pleasure have a great rest of your day oh you too i hope you liked my interview with gina and i invite you to head to milotree.com and start growing your business faster if you are trying to grow your social media followers and your email list, MyLaTree will do it on steroids. They, it will grow your followers 24-7 and your email list, uh, and it does it while you sleep. If you have any questions, reach out to me at Jillian at MyLaTree.com. Mm -hmm.